to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I'll give you a few moments just to find us and come on in. We have a little visitor with us today. So, how are we all doing? Here we all come. I can see people tuning in. So, are we going to say good morning? Are we going to say good morning? Oh, what's this over here? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday with myself and lovely Jilly. The sound is great. So um, we have a little visitor with us this morning. Um, she's here for the day to keep me company, make sure that we don't get into any trouble. So this is Gola. And um, yeah, she's going to be crafting with us today. No, not really. She, she's not very good at grid work. She's not bad at um, groovy, but not so good at grid work. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I thought we're, we'd give her a little TV debut today. Uh, what do you think? Are you going to say good morning? Good morning, everybody. And she's probably thinking, who is he talking to? I can't see anybody. Look, she's bored already. Look, she's yawning. That's the effect that I have <laughs> on her. It'll probably have the same effect on everybody at home. So, um, yeah, I thought we'd just brighten up the day a little bit today. And a um, little visitor, and just while everybody's coming in. So, yes, good morning, good morning. So, I'm going to hand her over to the lovely Jilly. Jilly's going to keep you occupied for the, the next hour while we do some crafting. Yes? So, there we go. So, Thank you very much, Jilly. <laughs> there we go. Right. There. How are we all doing today? Tuesday already. Quite mild down here in Kent today. It's grey and overcast, but it, it's quite mild. So um, short sleeve shirt again today. So um, yes. All of my little lonesome. No lovely Linda today. Linda's having a bit of a break. But I've seen some of the work you've been doing with the beautiful frosted floral overlays and um, oh, absolutely beautiful. And I think it is one of those those skills that you sort of build up to, isn't it? And at the end of the day, when you're doing the colouring technique, it's just a piece of parchment. And if you go wrong, if you're using the pencils, then you can erase it with the eraser pencil. So it really does have that flexibility to it. And then when you combine both looks from the frosted floral, from the frosted element and the colour, it just goes bing. And I think as Linda said at the beginning of the um, frosted floral February, then um, if your colouring's not so great or your white work's not so great, when you combine them together, any sort of little imperfections. I mean, we're our own worst critics, aren't we? So we always think, oh, maybe I should have gone so heavy on here, maybe not so heavy on there. And um, yeah, it's all about sort of just get it practicing. It's like anything. I mean, who thought back in the day that I'd be doing groovy on TV or parchment craft? Um, absolutely crazy. Considering I sort of started off die cutting, stamping, decoupage I mean my first love of crafting was decoupage and um and then it just gradually sort of changed in different directions so how are we all doing today so I thought what we're going to do we're going to go back to basics with some grid work and um I've always loved the effect of grid work on parchment craft and in a traditional method you've always had to sort of it be a, a basic grid and you've got a count and plot and perforate and emboss and you make a mistake and you think oh now you've got to adapt your pattern but the lovely Josie the queen of the grid work she just comes up trumps every single time and she designed the duet grids and we've got various different grids in the collection so I thought to start off with whilst we're, we're just all getting together we'll just have a little bit of a look at the different ones we've got so this one here this is um Edward so this is part of the King's collection. And you'll notice on each of the plates as we go through them, that one part is brighter white than the other. So this is where the traditional groovy element comes in. So this is the embossed part. And then this side is slightly lighter. 
and this is where they're drilled and these are precision drilled and they're designed that you can use them independent of one another but you can when combined together you get that beautiful lace work so we've got the kings and I've, I've just got one of each of the different collections then we have uh what have we got so then we've got the the princesses so charlotte is one of them i love this one i mean for me just the embossing part really does the job or just the perforating then what do we have after that then we have ah this was a bit of a game changer the palaces that included those beautiful photo corners so if you wanted to you could take just the corners and just put those on the card you don't have to to use the whole of the design okay then we have the italian cities now this was the first time where we sort of did like a horseshoe because of the way in which this has been designed this is based on a diagonal grid the design going across this way is different to the design that comes down here so therefore what we had to do was to create a horseshoe rather than just an l like the other ones then we had another game changer which were the circular grids now i really love working with these and the way in which josie designed these you've got the the larger circle and then you've got the inner circle so we have those as well then we went big so we went with the princes and this is prince william and you can see you've got a real sort of when you look at the, the width of these borders, don't think, oh, it's a little bit too chunky because you can pick and choose the elements of them. And because Josie's done all the work for us, what it means is that you can take the design exactly as it comes, just like we can with a normal groovy plate. But because they give you the confidence, you can take just the elements of them for the decorative side of it. There we've also got the, the ribbon ones as well. So the way in which Josie designed these, that if you chose to, you can thread ribbon through each of the designs. Okay. The latest in the collection were the French cities. And again, these were based on a diagonal grid, hence why we have the, the horseshoe part, because you'll see this design here is different to the design there. It's the same, but different, if that sort of makes sense. Okay. And then you've got decorative elements in the middle. Now, I reached out to Josie and I said, look, we're going to look at some grids in Groovy Tuesday. We're going to make it nice and easy for people that are sort of maybe struggling. And we agreed that the Queens would be a really good place to start, especially Elizabeth. Okay because it's, there's not much detail on them in relation to the, the thickness. If I compare it to some of the, the other designs, for example, if we have a look at the princess and we look at Charlotte, you can see, although they're the same sort of thickness, there's a lot more work to be done on this one here, okay? So during the course of this month, I thought what we'll do is we'll go back to basics with the grid work and just show you how easy it is to achieve and maybe if you're struggling for because when you've got just a, a right angle and you've got to go, turn it round, then turn it round, and then you get to the fourth one to line it up and often it goes oh, it's out by a fraction and there are ways of sort of adjusting it but hopefully over the course of this month we'll show with ease how you can sort of maybe not well, well i can't speak this morning it's it's one of those days we're going to work through it slowly at a nice steady pace if you've got any questions you can pop those up Jilly will prompt me if i miss any and i know i'm guessing josie's probably in the room if she's recovered from her retreat at the weekend we've got lots of the lovely design team members in the room as well and over the course of march yeah march really um, on the Clarity Matters blog every Sunday, Josie has done a step-by-step -step tutorial using various different grids. So although I'm going to concentrate on Queen Elizabeth, if you have any of the other grids, the principle is the same, 
so you'll be able to adapt and work with us okay there we go i'm here paul thank you jc i, I knew jc would be there uh, so sort of, no pressure is there paul but you know what there isn't any pressure because you've got the grids the grids do all the work for you so what do we need to get started we'll give you a few minutes to get everything together so you're going to take your plate of choice if you've got queen elizabeth brilliant but if you haven't then any of the duet grids will work just the same okay now you have choices you can go with the plate mate that comes in the starter kit if you're going with one of the a5 squares or what i prefer to use when i'm using the um the grids is josie's a5 square plate mate for grids okay and the reason i like to use this one is because it's got all these lines around the outside so it gives me that help with positioning the parchment okay so we need a plate a plate mate i'm going to go big with a4 parchment because I, again i find it easier if i can go start big and i get carried away then i can trim that down to the size so we're going to need some parchment definitely going to need some groovy tabs i'm going to be using the number two tool from the groovy um, number one and number two so the number two tool there a tumble dry sheet and a groovy guard so i think that's all we're going to need for this session and we're just going to take it nice and easy you can either groove along at the same time or you can just watch it's entirely up to you and if you think oh, maybe grid work's not for me then maybe after watching this over the next couple of months over the next month couple of months a month um, over the month you may think you know what i want to give it a go okay so we're all ready to to rock and roll lovely jilly's putting all the various different links up so if you're looking for something she'll be able to point you in the right direction see we've got the lovely pat hoskins in the room tina linda walker sally ann good morning everybody and I can see varying different weather conditions up and down the UK. Oh dear. What have we been up to? Oh yeah, we, we had TV on Friday. We was up there with Barb. <laughs> A few technical issues, but you know what? It was to be expected. And then we had um, a groovy show on Saturday. Um, that was really nice to do. We took it back to basics. We started with the the groovy starter kit just like we did with groovy tuesday earlier last year where we took it back to the beginning opened up the starter kit worked with the butterfly plate and created some beautiful pieces so if you're tuning in for the first time as a result of watching create and craft on saturday welcome welcome to groovy tuesday jilly will pop a link up to all the previous groovy tuesday or to our youtube channel Maybe you found us via Facebook. Maybe you found us via the Pergamano website. Maybe you found us via the Clarity website or even um, YouTube. Every single episode of Groovy Tuesday and the Pergamano School, the lovely Linda Williams, is all recorded. So it means you can go back and watch again and again and again. Also means you can fast forward through all the waffling and the, the introduction <laughs> as well if you really just want to get down and sort of have a go so i think we must be ready to to rock and roll now what you'll find on what i'm going to do i'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on this one because we can really sort of come i've forgotten so we want to go in let's see how close you want to come i don't want to come in too close I think that's close enough to start with. Now, like with all groovy plates, what we need to be able to do we, for the, the embossing part, we need to be able to read the word groovy, okay? And if you run your finger across, you'll feel that you've got grooves. The perforations are drilled through, all the way through. But we're not even gonna go there at this point. 
we're just going to be looking at the embossing element today. Okay. Now, also on the plate, just as a gentle reminder, it says emboss this side out. Let's see if I can come in on this one. It says, there we go, emboss this side up. So as long as you can read that correctly, and you can read groovy the right, right, well, the right way round, then um, then you know the plate's in the right position. Okay. When we come to do the perforating, we turn the plate over, and it says perforate this side up. Okay. Also, in all of the different plates, we also get instructions. The lovely Josie shows us how it's going to look when it's finished. Okay, just a little sample part there. And when we turn it over, when we come to do the cutting, we've got a fantastic cutting guide as well. Okay, so, but we're not going to worry about that this week. Definitely not. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started. Just in that the dog is running riot. Bless her. Okay, so I'm going to take my plate. I tend to work in the top left-hand corner. It depends what you feel more comfortable with. And what I'm going to do, just so that it doesn't move around, because it's key to keep the plate in the perfect position. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple of groovy tabs, and I'm going to hold my plate to the plate mate. Okay, so that's not going to go anywhere now. Next, I'm going to take my piece of parchment. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it, I'm going to move the plates out of the way. And I'm going to wipe the parchment all over on the mat. And this was a good tip from Bob. If you do it on your mat, then you're not going to get any residue from the tumble dry sheet on your plate mate. And therefore, um, it means that the groovy tabs will stick better. Okay. I'm also going to wipe both sides while we're doing this. Okay, so I don't forget. Because what we're doing, we're doing the embossing first, and then the um, we're going to do the perforating afterwards. Now, we have choices. If you haven't got the plate mate um, for grids that comes with the lines, then you've got you can can if you choose line your parchment up with the edge of the plate okay but what i'm going to do just to give us a little bit more space i'm going to use the lines that come on the plate mate now i can decide how far in or where i want to position them so i'm going to line that up just there. i'm just going to bring my head over a little bit so i can make sure that it's in the right position. And I reckon that's about there. We need some more groovy tabs. Okay. And then I'm going to tape my parchment in place. Are we all okay with this? I'm sure we are. Okay. Now, what we learned from experience when we was working with the grid plates was rather than spend the time embossing all the dots and going all the way around and then when you join it up it doesn't meet you've wasted that time okay so what we're going to do we're going to create what we call registration marks so it'd be a good idea if we work out exactly what size piece we're going to pop in the middle so i've got some little pieces here Okay, so let's have a look here. I've got one that says, happy birthday. So if I look at it like that, so you could have your piece, it doesn't have to be your finished piece of artwork, it could just be a piece of artwork or a piece of card to represent the size in which you're gonna work. So it's whether I go this way or whether I go that way. Now, at this point, it really sort of doesn't matter because what we're gonna do is create a rectangle. Okay, so therefore I know if I pop that there, really for this particular plate, the work has been done for me because we've got the width and we also have the depth. 
But say, for example, I wanted to go for a smaller piece or a larger piece even. If I wanted to do a little square and a little piece, then what I would do is I would take my number two tool and I'd look to see where that corner is. And what I would do, I'm just pressing into those grooves just there. So I know I need to stop at that point. Okay, and then I would look at the same in the other side and do that here as well. So that would give me my sizing. Now another good trick to do is if you take a, a groovy tab, you could put a groovy tab or a piece of paper across so that you don't get carried away with the embossing. Okay, can we see that all right? Let's wonder if I come in on this camera here. There we go. So we can, hey, if I bring that back this way, where am I going? Left a bit, right a bit. There we go. So we can see I've done that embossed row there and I've done an embossed row here. So that would be my cutoff points for my design. So let's have a think about this. I reckon if we just keep this exactly the size that it is, then it means everybody at home doesn't need to worry about measuring out, okay? Are we all okay? Do you have to let the, Marilyn, hi Paul, do you have to let the dry, tumble dryer sheets dry? I've just take mine straight out of the packet. Um, mine are good to go. Um, depending on where you purchase them from, if they are a little bit moist, then you could just hang them up in the house and just let them air dry a little bit, just to take some of the moisture. Or if you've got a tumble dryer, just put them in the tumble dryer for, for five minutes. Okay, entirely up to you. So let's come back in on this camera. So we're gonna keep it exactly the size of the plate, just to keep it nice and simple, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to, as I said, I'm not going to trace out every part of it. So I'm going to look at the end part and I'm just pushing in to those dots. Okay, and you can see instantly that they're going white. And what I'm also going to, I'm holding the tool at an angle as if I would, as if I'm tracing out my design. Some people prefer to hold the tool more upright and give it a little wiggle, which you will get a whiter dot, but in the whole scheme of things, if you hold it all in the same position all the way around, nobody's actually gonna come to you and say, oh, that's not white enough, because <laughs> it will be, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the end mark here, and I'm just gonna push into the lines to create the inner frame. On all of the plates that we've created, we've also added additional straight lines on the inside and the outside. So this means that if you don't want to do any of the fancy pico cutting, you can still do all the embossing and the perforating, but not do any of the cutting, okay? So we're just gonna press in and go all the way along. Groovy guard, here's my groovy guard to lean on. So is anybody else at home doing this or are you just all watching? See, my voice starts to slow down, but you know what? I'm not having to count. I'm not having to worry about the pattern because the lovely Josie has done it all for us. Okay. I mean, look how easy it is to create that, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna turn my plate round so my work comes to me. We're gonna go, we're gonna go over here. And we're gonna repeat that same process. We're gonna take the end line and then come along the bottom. Okay. Let the work come to you. 
Okay, rather than sort of turn your hand so it's a bit cack handed, turn your work as you go along. Okay. Now, this particular plate, Queen Elizabeth, is really, really nice. It's very delicate, it's very. Um, see, I mean, I just love these little areas here that you can use. You could incorporate this into any design that you already have. Because at the end of the day, the groovy system, it, the beauty of the groovy system is that you can pick and choose the various different elements if you choose to. Or you can just take the design and go with it. Okay, so we've created that inner section. Okay, next what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the little corner. So I find this quite therapeutic, just pressing into those dots. Okay, I'm not worried about the, the solid lines. I'm just interested in getting the positioning of the plate. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a couple of these ones at random. So, there we go. Maybe I'll do a couple of these coming down here as well. And all we're doing is we're saving time, but we're also using them as guide marks or registration marks. I'm going to turn it round. I'll do another one just here. And let's do this one just here. Okay. Um, one more, one more for it's no, you get carried away, <laughs> you really do, oh dear, I just, yeah, okay, so that now, if I lift this off carefully from the plate, we can see if I turn this over now, it doesn't look anything, does it? But what we have done is we haven't wasted time going all the way into all that area and then bringing it around to me and it doesn't line up. Okay. So that's where we started. So now what we're going to do, this needs to be my corner. So I'm going to swing that round and this is where the registration marks really come into play. Okay, so I can feel, especially if you do that row of dots along the, the bottom on the inner frame, what you'll find is it gives you a really good positioning for it to fall back into slots. You know, like when we're doing um, normal groovy work and we, we go around and we, we do parts and then we go along and then it just slots back into place, okay? So a couple of tips here. Make sure that it, it's relocated, okay? And I can feel that that is in the right place. I'm gonna take my groovy tabs and I'm gonna pop one down there and I'm gonna pop one up here. Now this time I'm going to bring my little piece of artwork back into place. Okay, because that's going to sit just inside there. Because what you can easily do is forget that you're doing a rectangle, okay, and get carried away. So what I need to do is have a look at my piece of artwork and work out exactly where I need to stop. So if I pop that along there, okay, that is the same line as the line over the other side. Let me just bring that over, Ooh, that way. Let me bring it over, yeah. So that is the same line as over there. Now, just to help me so that I don't get carried away, I'm gonna take a piece of copy paper and position that on there as well. Okay. 
and I'm going to take some groovy tabs and I'm just going to hold it in place. Let me just fold it in half. It doesn't need to be a big A4 piece. It just needs to act as my guide. So this is a really good tip because if you get, you're easily distracted, like I could be when I'm talking and doing this, then what can happen is that you do get carried away and then you've gone too far and your rectangle then becomes a different shape. So we're gonna put that straight line in again, like we did before, just to continue. Where's my groovy tab? Oh, groovy, my groovy guard. So you just push in. And this really does save a lot of time. I know we've got to sort of go back in and, and infill the areas, but it's going to be a lot easier if you make a mistake that it hasn't taken that much time to recreate, if that makes sense. Let's put one of these in here. I'll put another one in here. And over a period of time, you'll get to know how, depending on the design, how much of a the embossed bits you need to do for your positioning. Okay, let's put this corner in as well while we're here. It really is. Okay, so we've now got one side, two side, three side. Okay, I'm going to lift off my copy paper and now we're going to lift off our design. So we're still working on the back of our parchment. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in to this side. Okay. So we're going to reposition our parchment. And as I said before, it just slots, it relocates itself. So let's just go back on the overhead. I'm just going to Oh, we're on the camera three, aren't we? So my head definitely won't get in the way unless I decide to have a little snooze. <laughs> so now that is going to go there. And then we'll get one of those groovy tabs and we're going to bring that in just there. So now what we're going to do, we're going to join up the fourth side. So I'm positioned perfectly there. It's also positioned well along here. I know my pattern is in the right place because it's they're relocated in that area there. And down here, this one slots perfectly into that corner just there. Okay, so I'm going to turn my work around. Let's bring that up so that we can now complete all four sides. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. So you're just going to go along. I, I don't know why, but when I'm doing this, I sort of count in my head, but I really don't need to do the counting. Because JC, as I say, and these are very addictive. Once you've achieved one, even if you just do the embossing part of it, just to actually complete a shape, whether it be a rectangle or a square, it really does give you the confidence. And then what we're going to do is just, I'm going to do this little corner here. Okay. And then we'll do a couple of these ones. And we'll do one down here. And the only reason I'm doing what, because I know that it meets perfectly. The only reason I'm doing this is that when we come to reposition it, once we're happy that all four sides meet, then it will just make it easier when we come to realign it to infill the rest of the area. Okay, so there 
okay so we've got that there so let's have a look i mean i know it has met because that cross point there is perfect so let's have a look we can remove our groovy tabs take that off there i've got so many groovy tabs on the go so just remember how many you've put on there okay let's have a look so now it looks a bit like one of those um old computer games you know like the um what was it the space invaders <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> People of a certain age will hopefully remember the Space Invaders. That's what it, it reminds me of. And um, if I take my piece of artwork, look, fits in there perfectly. Okay. Anybody done that? Did I go a little bit too fast or was it at the right pace? I think it's all about just showing with e how easily it is to actually get it to join up and space invaders were part yeah hazel remembers pac-man as well yeah <laughs> i mean they were state of the art back then i think with with the grids i think a lot of people look at them and think oh i really can't achieve that but you can it's the same as parchment craft a lot of people think that they can't do parchment craft because of the skill and the technique but with this, with the groovy system, it really does make it achievable. Okay, so what we can do now is we can go in and infill the rest of this area. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the plates back into play. And because I've got those registration, as I put that down, I felt it slot into place. It's really, it was a, right, here we go, off we go. So now we're going to attach it back into place. I just think the plates just are so magical. They really are. Um, it just, I don't know, that it just makes it really easy and achievable. And obviously the parchment's translucent and we're just sticking with clear parchment on this occasion just to work through but you could use colored parchment you could use the beautiful rainbow parchment to get a different effect the designer parchment you're only restricted by the size of your piece of parchment and if you're new to the the grids then a4 is definitely the best place to start because what it does is it allows you if you get carried away that what will happen is that you don't run out of space. And especially with some of the larger designs, for example, say like, um, let's have a look at the, the French cities. These are really sort of wide borders. So it is quite easy to run out of space because if you look at the size of the plate and the pattern, that is the side of the A5, A4 piece of parchment. Okay, so it really is, a4 is best. So what we're going to do now, if I come in on this camera, where are we going? Just over there. And we'll come back a little bit here. So what we're now going to do is just, in our own time, go through and complete the design. Now, some of the designs have solid areas of the embossing, like this one here. So it depends at this stage now whether you want to do white work in these areas or just have them beautiful crisp and white. So I think what we'll do is we'll, I'm going to do these as white work. So all I'm doing, I'm going to trace out very lightly with the number two tool, the same tool that we're using to do the embossing of the dots. to do the emboss lines as well. Okay. See, even my voice, it just really slows down. It's just, and while this is going on, I'm not thinking about anything else. I can hear the dust cart outside and that's it. 
funny, isn't it? So there we go. So then you go along and you just trace out the side. So here's a question for you. Who has any of the um, Josie's beautiful designs and do you have a favorite? And I can, I'll try and look up whilst I'm tracing out. Okay, nice and it's just so easy. It's, it really is. And even if you're not into your perforating just yet, you just like doing the embossing. The designs, the way in which Josie's designed them is that they just stand alone in their own right. Um, Carol Baker's got all of them and she doesn't have a favorite. Um, Nicole Louise Play is definitely her favorite. Bonnie's just bought a load in the sow and only just started. Jane Telford, well, Jane, yes, that says it all, does it? I do. I've got all of the, I do and I can't pick a favorite, I know. I think that the way in which Josie's designed them is that they all have um, favorite elements to them, I think, that you can pick and choose, that you think, oh, this will work nice for maybe a floral card, or this will work really well for um, maybe an image. But I think what's nice is that you can create a series of frames. So one day maybe you could just spend the day embossing the frames. And then another day you can go and do perforating of the frames. Rather than do the whole thing in one go. And then what you could do is just pop them in a folder and then you'll have a little collection of frames that you can go to. So when you create a piece of artwork, then you could have a look in your frame collection and see which frame suits it better, can't you? I often find that when I'm working with frames, once I've created my frame, I don't tend to go onto the panel in the middle. I'll always use a separate piece of um, parchment as a topper because what I don't want to do is I've spent the time creating the frame and then I put a piece of artwork in the middle and I make a mistake or I ruin it. So, I mean, if I did do that, I could always put another piece on top. I mean, it's not near the end of the world, but I just sort of, it's removing that room for error, I find. We're going to turn that round. And it doesn't take long once you, you get into the swing of things. Okay. And then... Do you think about, apart from all the, the talking and the stopping and the starting, we can easily achieve this little frame with just doing the embossing within an hour. Obviously, I'm more familiar with the design and the technique and the positioning. So it may take you a couple of times to get it right. But hopefully, with what I've shown you today, it will help getting the, um, the positioning right to complete the rectangle or the square. Okay. Look, we're almost done two sides. It really, and I chose Elizabeth because I thought it, well, obviously it's the, the Jubilee this year as well, isn't it? And I thought that was a, a good choice. So lift that off, remove it from there. So now I can turn that round. This is now going to slot. It does, look. It really, it's, it's magical. There we go. We're gonna hold that one in place there. 
and that one in place there. Groovy guard. Do the embossing of the pattern. And we just, and it, you go at your own pace. You really do. There's no rush. It's all about enjoying what you're doing. You see, and in a minute, we're about to run out of the pattern, but it doesn't matter because when we turn it round, then the pattern will continue. See? So we'll come to a stop at that point. I tend to, well, do, do I go left to right or do I go right to left? I don't know. I've never really thought about embossing I suppose because I don't have to think about the design, I just go along with it. So what else have we got coming up for you this week at Clarity Towers? Well, on Thursday, we've got the Shack Shack with Barb again at 10 o'clock. Um, then on Friday, we've got our first moment of clarity at 3 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube Live. That's Barbara showcasing those beautiful montage and clean and tidy stamps um, that we launched. We, I say we, that Barbara launched on Friday last week. So um, when we're prepping for a TV show, we always do more than what's required in relation to demos. And Barb, in all the world in the world, she'll never ever, we work through the, I, say, I keep saying we, it's not we, <coughs> excuse me. Barb will create all the demos and then she puts them in a sequence and she says, right, we'll do this one and this one, we'll do this in that hour and this in that hour. And she works for it, she gets it all in the head and blah, blah, blah. And time just disappears. It really, I think even if we'd had like a three hour show, still wouldn't get through all the demos. Barbara always has plenty to keep going. So if you need to sort of jump in with a little bit here or jump in with a little bit there. So she's got some beautiful demos to showcase in the moment of clarity on Friday, 3 p.m. Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And um, yeah, doing it from here. So just travel down the road from, Ed from Crowborough to Edenbridge. Oh, sip of coffee. I'll give you a minute just to, to recap. So that's on Friday. Then Sunday, first Sunday of the month in March. Hours have changed from two to four until three to five because the ODS hours have changed, so it just gets moved up an hour. Oh, and when you see, I think Barb may give you a sneak peek on Thursday in the shack of what's coming up on the Sunday show, the two hours. And then Monday, I'm on Crank Craft at 7 a.m. and 12 p.m with some really good offers on some of our beautiful fresh cut dyes. And um, yeah, so if, you, if you're looking to top up your fresh cut dye collection, then Monday may be the opportunity for you to do that. So we're just gonna continue. I've done all that part there now. And then we're gonna lift that up. I'm gonna turn it round, reposition it again. There we go, that falls back into place. Yeah, I reckon that's about there. Bring that groovy tab round. Yeah, it's working really well. So we've got this area here to, to finish off. So we'll do the embossed pattern first. Anyone got any questions? So I'm trying to look up. I'm just getting engrossed in what I'm doing. So just going to go around and just complete the design. But it really is, once you've got those registration marks in place, it really does make a difference with your work. 
because it just allows you to well it gives you less room for error doesn't it and hopefully today I've shown you how easy it is to achieve that but you can see how it sort of starts to see I just love this just the embossing really really nice and this will be a beautiful design without any perfect and we've only used half of the plate that's all we've done I'm going to spin this around now because I like to go across the top we've only used half of the design on the plate because the other half is perforating and what we've done here with the embossing part if you just wanted to do the perforating it's exactly the same principle you just perforate some of the holes first to create your registration marks create the size of don't forget to keep bringing your your topper piece into play to make sure especially where you've got a longer part on the design put that piece of copy paper over the top just so that you don't get carried away i've done it myself i'm thinking right i'm going to do this square and you sort of create those registration marks of where you need to stop but you're in the groove you and you get carried away and then you get the next thing you know oh oh well we've got to start again or adapt the design that we've been working with and finally we've got the final little bit of the corner to pop in there and that lines back up there and that goes just in there and I reckon we have completed our little frame. Yes! And it meets perfectly. And my little topper fits in there just as it's meant to. See? Really happy with that. And it wasn't luck, it's only from what I've been watching Josie do and other members of the design team have watched Barbara do, to get that, um, the registration marks, rather than do all of the design all the way around, and then you go around and you think, mm, it, it doesn't meet, it's out of fraction. And yeah, we can put a butterfly on it, as long as it's not too far. I mean, if, if you've got a big gap, then obviously it's got to be a big butterfly and it will look a bit strange, but maybe it's a new shape. Maybe it's a slanted rectangle. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we've still got time. So what I thought we'd do now is we can have a look at this and this is how it is. That's it just embossed out. And you can see the difference in the, the whiteness of the embossing. So where I've pushed in with the number two, and then I've traced lightly with the number two tool so I can do some white work. But if you're not into your Pico cutting just yet and you just want to think, right, okay, well, I like that. I want to do the perforating, but I also want to create a frame so I can just cut it down with a craft knife or a ruler. So we're going to take our design. We're going to pop it back into place. Okay. So that, we're going to hold that down. And what we're going to do now is I know the outer frame is going to be perfect. Okay, let's bring that in. So the outer frame is larger than the design itself. But the inner part is smaller. So it's knowing where to stop. Okay, so let's do... The outer part first. So I'm going to go with the number one tool. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to come down. And as I come down, before I get to the bottom, you know how Linda shows us when we're doing white work and we flick away? Okay, we flick away. So what we're going to do as we come down is we're going to flick away so that we don't create 
a sharp edge and I'll show you that in a moment. So we're going to come along the top and then flick away. So if I take a black piece of card, and if I, I'm going to come in on the number three. So if I take a black piece of card and pop it under there, can you see how it's not, I haven't come right to the point. I've flicked away, so it's slightly flicked, yeah? And what that will do, when we come to join it up, we won't have like a solid overlap of the design. Now on the inside, I know I do need to stop before I get to the end. So I'm going to put that tool, the plate um, groovy guard, just there. Okay. And then I'm going to come down and flick again. Try it. Rather than, before you do it onto your piece of artwork, take a piece of scrap parchment and try the flick technique. Okay. And then we're going to do the same. I'm going to turn it around this way. And I'm going to put the groovy guard there because I don't want to go any further than that. So now we've got the flick there, the flick there. Flick up, flick up, flick up. <laughs> we've got the flick on all different parts. Then we're going to turn that round. And now we're going to line the design up. So that goes in. These will now slot in again more easily. So I'm going to bring it around this way so I can see we're on the camera three, so I don't want to worry about the, the overhead. Position that so that that's in the, the right place. Yeah. Hold that down. Now this time we're going to start here and we're going to flick into the flick. Okay. I'm going to come round and flick into the flick. And then on this one, I just need to move that over slightly. Come get that in position. There we go. I don't want to ruin it after all this. So that's there. Now I know I'm going to go further. I'm going to come down and flick down and flick. Definitely stopping on the inside of there. Down and flick. Down and flick. And then all we do, we just, you can see now, can't you, the, the flicking. Okay, and they don't have to all flick in the same place, just as long as you've got some, some flicks. <laughs> there we're going to come round. We're going to line this one up. Oop. It, bring the pattern in so that it's in the right position. That's nice and comfortable just there. There we go, that's in place. Bring that down, turn that around. Then we're going to come round and flick, round and flick. Round and flick round and flick. Turn it around again. It's coming on the, the overhead. So all of a sudden you can see it's starting to, to line up now, can't you? So then groovy guard definitely for here. And flick. And this one, it's going to come all the way around, but I'm still going to flick. And this is where the magic happens. Fingers crossed, he says. Line it back up. That goes into position there. That's in line there. Just going to bring my head over a little bit. And that's about right, I think. That's lined up. That's lined up. Oh, hang on. Got too many groovy <coughs> stickers on the go. Right, line it up and when you overhead. There we go. Swing that round. 
because the parchment's catching on the, the edge of the mat. So at this point, if you wanted to, you could, because you know that your, your parchment's big enough now, so now what you can do is trim off some excess so it doesn't keep catching on the mat like my one is. That's going to go there. Come on, play nicely. Yeah, I reckon that's about it. And then round, 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 and round. And so now, <coughs> excuse me, there we go. So we've now got our solid frame. It's a little bit patchy in places, but I'm not worried about that because I can reposition it and go back in and put more pressure on. The whole purpose was to get that beautiful frame lined up in the perfect position. So um, that was quite easy, wasn't it? <laughs> Huge sigh of relief, no. I was confident because of the, the plates that Josie's designed, I was confident and it was just trying to break it down and make it as easy to achieve as possible for people that do maybe struggle with the positioning. The plate mate for grids definitely makes a difference um, when you for because you've got all these extra lines on there. So maybe maybe that would help you if you're struggling with that. Um, you can obviously use the outlines of the plates as well, but th that was one of the reasons that Josie designed the the plate mate. It was so it was to assist with the positioning. So that you always know that when you turn it round and you're lining it up, there will be a line on on this grid somewhere on this plate, mate, where you can line up to make sure that your parchment is completely straight. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed this hour. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and um, thank you for joining me again. So next week we're going to jump on to the perforating. Okay. So if you've got any questions, Groovy Worldwide, Clarity Worldwide, then um, then ask away. And we'll just say goodbye to the lovely Gola, because I can hear that she's been outside the door. Here she goes. Thank you, Jilly. There we go. So she's come to say goodbye. And thank you for joining her as well today. Haven't you? Yes. You've been a good girl. Not. <laughs> So thank you for joining me and Gola as well. Let's just swap around on this side. And um, yeah, I hope you've learned something. Don't forget, you can go back and watch on YouTube and Groove and Groovy Worldwide. Yes, you can, can't they? And um, I shall see you next week. I'll be in the room with you on Thursday with Barb. And um, yeah, I shall see you next Tuesday. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.